Hey listeners, no traditional mostly speaking Sentai intro this week because what you're getting is the world premiere on mostly speaking Sentai of my new single with Dragon Boy Suede, Indica Inch. You're gonna love it. You're gonna have to listen to it because it's gonna be playing in 5, 4, oh, it's also available tonight, <laughs> June 9th or 10th worldwide. So let's begin in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bye. Wants to chill, the other half's got a load to spill. My upper part wants to chillax, my lower part wants out my slacks. This indecision's bugging me. Watch porn hub or smoke more weed. I got two needs need to fulfill. Should I chill or should I spill? I got two needs need to fulfill. Should I chill or should I spill? Hit the hub and rub a dub. Pack a bowl, smoke another nub. Rip the bong, take a massive hit Pick a clip and let it rip My girl left me home alone I watch porno and I got stoned My girl has a ride back home Stash the weed, force quit chrome Got the day up to stay lost, drained in bed But my great pops gave off you are consuming cannabis, using strains as meds I'm abusing abstinence till my brain is dead And I flip on the flicks for the gill, more chicks Feel the rip as I slip on my indoor kicks But I'm slammed in the midst of my gill, more fix Cause my dick's growing big, gotta spill small quick But the night shit is hitting with the twice big decision Do I watch Sookie Cook or get my nice way to grip and let them over arise This sort of myth I better warn or revive that I'm horny and high Should be snoring my man, not the door in the clam Cause Lauren Graham gave me a roar Deal, so in cinema, switch, yo, Laura Lai, Gilmore gets the in the cut inch. Gilmore gets me bone and stone, yo, my chode is grown, now my oats is sown. Gilmore got me full of the serotonin, plus a flask of peen and a force for moan. Dragon Boy Sway, Colab, Marshland Monster. What do you do? Yeah! Oh, yes, guys. Like, oh, wait, shit. I didn't say my name is James. I'm Nicole, and this is Mostly Speaking Sentai. Oh, yes, guys. Like I said, my name is James, and I have been working out, and let's just say, uh, it's been working out. I feel good. I look great. Oh, and call me an independent contractor because I'm putting in some cum gutters beneath my gut, baby. <laughs> Wordplay. <laughs> Gutter, gut, it has the same syllables. That's how words are played, but also... Oh my god, I'm getting down to a weight that my co-host, Nickel Bricks, Nicole, my queen... Uh, hi. Yeah, that was your introduction, baby. Okay. Be on your toes as if you're a ballerina with the word play. It's like art, Barishnikov. You stopped mid-sentence yeah. to intro me. Yeah, because I was going to say... I revealed my I way. I thought you were going to finish your sentence, dude. <laughs> that, I thought we were <laughs> such a good couple that we would finish each other's sentences. Fuck. <laughs> Shit, piss. <laughs> I revealed my way and then Nicole said, what'd you say? Uh, that I almost uh, weigh as much oh. as her. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, but. I don't have that voluptuous body you got, boy oing mm -hmm. And if I did, damn. I wish we looked exactly alike. <laughs> Why? I don't know. You just body be banging. Okay. Super fresh, baby. But enough to be, like, enough differences in our facial features that people would be like, oh, they're not related. Because <laughs> if yeah. we looked identical, people would be like, what the fuck is going on? Some twin cyst? Yeah. I, 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 for sure. We also need to introduce our guest because our guest 
and Steve F., the hit people guy, had very funny things to say on a stream in relation to my weight. So, you know them from the rom complex. It is Shelby R2 style. Hey, what's up? It's me, R2 style Shelby. <laughs> I, I have a lot of things to say about your weight. <laughs> what's up? <laughs> I don't, but I think it's really sweet that you want you and Nicole to have the same body. It's, yeah. It's creepy. No, it's not. It is creepy, but but in a kind of nice way. Like, I can see <laughs> the I can see the sweetness in it. Okay. Yeah, like me wanting to, I'm growing out my hair to make a wig for Nicole. She has alopecia. She can't grow it. <laughs> but I can. I think James is just very sweet in a sort of childlike way. <laughs> I'm getting a, what what do you call like when it's like a toupee, but it's small. There's it's another word for a toupee. A toupee? <laughs> merkin. Yeah, okay. I'm getting a merkin made out of my pubes so Nicole can be like, hey, I can put this on my armpits, my legs, wherever. Uh, yeah, Nicole the seems trash. like the kind of person who wants a <laughs> left armpit wig. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, I got enough pubes to go on both. Nope. Just the one. Okay. Yeah, no, that's stylish these days. Just yeah. like how people would shave one eyebrow and According be cool. To who? Uh, but the people who would shave one eyebrow and it'd be cool. Hey, you shave yeah. one armpit, what? grow the other out. Are Are you sure Gen Z, baby. It wasn't like some sort of, like they were trying to fix their nope. eyebrow, like, you know, and then <laughs> it just like went horribly wrong. And nope. then they were like, haha, it's the new style. Uh-uh. Or they shave one half of their beard. So you can, in profile, you have beard, in other profile. Or like, at a birthday, and the birthday candles, like, set their eyebrow on fire. Nope. Did that happen to you? No. That's an odd specific. <laughs> yeah, I was at a birthday, and it, like, set just every hair on my body on fire. Hell yeah. Because <laughs> everyone knows that, like a dynamite stick... The hair follicles are like wicked inside of you, yeah, yeah. so it will go like a candle. Yeah, they're all connected. Yeah. Yep, goes inside and it will just burn your insides as well. Uh huh. And that's where we get spontaneous combustion. I get spontaneous combust, son. Okay. That's when I <laughs> come on busts of presidents. Okay. In the White House. Okay. <laughs> Just covered in it. Put, don't put a black light on in the bust room. You don't need to. You don't? Oh, yeah. It's visible. <laughs> yeah. No one cleans it off. And uh, for some weird reason, my semen does not dry. That's just not true. <laughs> yes, it is. It's just not true. It's fantastical. <laughs> Why can't it be true? Yeah, play along. Oh, uh -huh. Be with God, us <laughs> in this space where James has come that never dries. Okay. Uh -huh. Sorry. You've heard it of... It definitely doesn't make me want to gag. Everlasting <laughs> gobstoppers. This is ever... Uh, there's something there, guys. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't want to stop this niceness. So, on the stream... Shelby and Steve, I forgot who it said at first, but one of you were like, I could throw James over my shoulder. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then you guys just kept going back and forth. I thought that was very funny. <laughs> it would be fun to toss you around, just like up in the air. Wee. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. <laughs> do what my dad used to do. We, he would go in a pool and then he we would put our leg on his knee with his hands on there and he would just like throw us up into the yeah, air yeah, straight yeah. up and we go Whoa! but yeah. then it'd be fine because it's water yeah, yeah yeah until he misses <laughs> it was a huge pool it was like a indoor pool it wasn't yeah, 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 our yeah, yeah, yeah. above ground that my sister found in the freebie section <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> one thing i know about dads is that they love to toss their children into the air because they feel like a god Y you're right, and that's what God does to all of us. Yeah, he's throwing us around on this big ball called Earth, jet-setting through the universe. How come we can't feel the Earth move, scientists? Yeah. Must be flat. Only only explanation. Yeah, if I were driving in a but car. But even if it is flat, it's still moving. No, 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 no. no. 
<laughs> but it's not moving through the universe at the supposed, I don't know, yeah, 11,000 miles per hour. Yeah, it is, dude. I get on a boat going three miles an hour That's and I get queasy. Thing. So I've never moved in my life. The whole <laughs> world just moves around me. Oh, hell yeah. That You're like in a VR rig. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm completely stationary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whew, you got COVID. I do have COVID. I current this is the voice of a person suffering from COVID nineteen. Okay, Shelby, this is how I know I want to keep collaborating with you. I saw because last night you were like, ooh, I got I got like a cough and whatnot, took a COVID test, it was negative. I get a message from you maybe two hours before our record saying, and I first see, yeah, I tested positive for COVID. Normally People will be like, I we I got to reschedule. No, 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 no. You said, <laughs> I don't have to go into work today, so I can start early. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I don't have any symptoms that would keep me from doing a podcast. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it's mostly just uh, body aches. But those are gone now. It was just, I was very sweaty all night. And that that was the main thing. <laughs> Sounds like a mid-July average in our home. Yeah, totally. It gets muggy here. Yeah, it, it's pretty warm here. I don't really have good AC, unfortunately, mm-hmm. which is weird. Moving when I lived in Florida, like everywhere was required to have air conditioning, and then I moved, you know, other places, and it's like, why, <laughs> why is there no AC? Mm-hmm. Well, because they got that breeze that Santa Ana winds. Santa Ana winds are hot. <laughs> oh, damn it. It's breezy, though. <laughs> like you're in an oven, dude. Okay, this yeah. is what you do. Convection style. You put like a bunch of, so you're patriotic. It's the summertime for crying out loud. Put a bunch of rocket popsicles on your windowsill. Let that breeze flow in. That's going to mm. cool down everywhere because America is cold. Well, okay, I tried that, but all the neighborhood children come and steal my pops off my oh, sill. Oh, man. They go up and just go... <laughs> if the ants yeah, they don't float over it. tongue first. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. yeah. Yogi style. <laughs> yeah. He's the coolest guy. <laughs> Nicole, on a rating from one to ten, Yogi Bear. Uh, five. Oh, my Neutral. God. Neutral. You're neutral on the bear? Yeah. You're constantly quoting him saying, yeah. Because it makes you laugh. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I told, uh, I think it was Sean. He did a Snagglepuss impression. I was like, I'm going to be completely honest. If you make a Snagglepuss impression, no matter what, I'm going to laugh at it. <laughs> Butter's with us, looking cute, sleeping. Butter does look very cute. Mm-hmm. She's already acclimated to me screaming. Yeah, she's already a professional podcaster. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. How are the levels, Butter? All right, looking good. <laughs> <laughs> Shelby, you got anything to talk about with your week besides COVID? Oh, okay, let's see. Well, I got COVID because I went to an emo night mm-hmm. on Friday. That was, was it fun. Worth it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Right, hell yeah. I made out with a hot stranger nice. and he lifted, he physically lifted me off the ground. What? Okay. And then told me that he didn't have a phone because he lost it at a crawdad festival. <laughs> I will never forget this. Oh my my friend got a picture of me making out with this random guy and I set it as my phone background. <laughs> I voted yes on you uh, putting that as your background because you had a Twitter I poll. I did tweet about it, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you. One person voted no on the Twitter poll and I'm like, why? Jealous. Who's doing that? <laughs> what person doesn't like fun? Which one of you know. is it? Oh, it must have been Sean Marciniak or Nick Foster. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> People who do not like fun. Uh huh. Uh huh. You also heard the egg whites on the <laughs> yeah, show. Yeah, I texted you. I think I messaged you while it was playing because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I was very drunk. <laughs> but I was like, it's like James and Nicole are here with me. <laughs> Nicole. When I said that to her, she goes, yes, we've polluted people's minds. <laughs> you have. I've will- willingly taken it in. Yes. Well, speaking of willingly taking things in, education. 
Uh-huh. Five, yeah. man. They're, oh. they're, they're teachers. They're students there. When you were in high school, middle school, elementary, you pick your poison. What kind of student were you? Well, okay. So I was one of those students where I did well on all of the tests, but I never did my homework. Hell yeah. So um, some of the teachers really liked me and other teachers thought I was very annoying. <laughs> and uh, that's just kind of how it goes. I don't really like to think about it too much because I did not like school. That's yeah. an- that's insane. If I was one of those teachers, I'd be like, hey, that's one less homework I have to grade. Right? True. Unless it's like, well, are yeah, they but cheating? That shit reflects poorly on you as a teacher, though. I would say I'm not getting yeah. paid enough for this. Like, I'm sure their higher ups are like, hey, your students are fucking terrible. <laughs> Specifically um, one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Named uh, Shelby. Did you know that I was a teacher briefly? Like, I have a master's degree in teaching. I knew that. Whoa. I didn't know you were a teacher. That's why you invited me here today. Oh, wait. Yeah, we should have said, hey, how's teaching? <laughs> <laughs> it was horrible. It was awful. <laughs> well, yeah, you said you didn't like school. <laughs> so you became a teacher. <laughs> Look, I can't defend all of my decisions. Because you're a masochist. I think that had something to do with it. <laughs> Hell Yeah. <laughs> I grew out of it. I was tired of crying every day, so I stopped teaching. <laughs> How long were you a teacher? Probably only like a year and a half. Okay. Yeah. Here in California or Florida? No, it was in Florida. So I did a, a semester of like full-time teaching internship in a middle school in Tampa, Florida. And then I taught small group reading and math in private schools in in Florida for like a year. Hell yeah. Were any of them snorting cocaine and uh, from a crucifix and then trying to have sex with her stepbrother? No. Is okay. that a reference? Is that I a thing get? that you did, James? <laughs> no, that's from uh, Cruel Intentions. Is that the name of the movie? Oh. oh no, know. those kids didn't have any. T- those kids didn't have any cocaine. Damn. Cool <laughs> intentions did, though. Was that in Florida? No. That was in the Upper East Side, I believe, of Manhattan, USA. <laughs> That's the same. Yeah. <laughs> Both are peninsulas. Uh-huh. Manhattan's an go. island, you stupid shit, James. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to a coworker. We were talking about, like, jobs that we've had. Mm-hmm. And she told me that when she was 16, she, like, taught an art class at a a school for middle schoolers. And it was unsupervised. Wowzers. And had a kid just, like, leave out the window. And she was like, what do I do? You scream legend. (laughs) Yeah. What the fuck, dude? Kids kind of stop listening to anything that you ask them to do. By the time they turn like eight. <laughs> yeah. Unless it's, uh, hey, can you come over here and make some slime? <laughs> yeah, all kids love making slime. Uh-huh. And that's the one thing that gets them. Yeah. Hey, you want to play some Pokemon? Well, Link Neal from Good Mythical Morning, his kid. I. It's so funny because it's like. When they talk about him, he, like, disciplines himself and, like, gets upset when people swear and will, like, Uh leave the room if it's on the TV and stuff. And I'm like, this is adorable. Kids are weird. Kids are (laughs) so strange. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. They don't know what's going on with their body. Of course they're going to be weird. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if anyone sees a kid and they're like, you shouldn't be acting that way. And it's like, sorry. My bones are literally ripping apart and making new <laughs> bones, and I don't know how to feel about it. I'm going to lash That's out. That's true. Yeah. I, we should give kids a break. Yeah. They're still fucking weird, but but we're okay with it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Let them express themselves however they see fit. Yeah, let them grow their bones in peace. hmm mm-hmm. <laughs> Name of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wait, I wanted to bring up, I was waiting for you to do the, like, what did you do this week? What did uh, you do? Because I just had, like, one thing, which was us watching Summer of 1984. Summer of 84. Finally, which is a horror movie. And I was like, oh, this is, like, the younger version of that Shia LaBeouf movie. And James goes, uh, uh, 
dysenteria. And I was like, <laughs> everyone just shitting their brains out? Uh-huh, like, uh-huh. no, that's not what it's called. Well, because I thought it was Gothica. I thought it was Disturbia. It is Disturbia. Oh, oh no, I said it? Suburbia. Uh, yeah. And yeah, then yeah. I was like, I don't know. I know it starts with a D, D dysentery. No, that's not what it is. And then Nicole's like, oh, you misspoke, James. Dysenteria yeah. does sound like a movie on <laughs> Shudder, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It No, it sounds like a movie on Troma now. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Absolutely. It's someone. I know it wasn't. I believe Ian from Horror Corridor was telling us about like some zombie movie where like people start killing each other and they find out it's because there's like poopy in the water. And it's like just a I real I think I've weird. heard of that movie. Yeah. I read the... So I don't watch yeah. a lot of horror movies, but I do read all of the plot synopsis on Wikipedia. Like Hell anytime yeah. anyone mentions a horror movie, I'll go ahead and read <laughs> the whole <laughs> plot. And I do remember one where it was like this town where everyone... There was like poopy in the bay or something and everyone who went swimming in there died. Damn. Yeah. But this was people drinking it, I think. Oh. Possibly. Or people were going into the sewers and then were getting yeah. zombified. Yeah, it was something with because it was Okay, easy. Don't go in the sewer. Yeah. I've never had to go in a sewer <laughs> in my life. <laughs> they were like, Don't watch this if you don't want to see people just covered in shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Covered in the poopies. So, th- this is a five man. It's a Super Sentai. Shelby, what's your experience with Power Rangers or Super Sentai? Okay, I loved Power Rangers when I was a kid. I dressed as the Pink Ranger like every year. My mom would make me a new costume to fit with the uh, current outfits that they had. Hell yeah. It was awesome. This this show was I had never seen before, but it's freaking great. Yes. <laughs> I loved it. From the very first notes of the intro, I'm like, hell yeah, this uh-huh, is banging. Uh-huh. Your mom was like, hey, don't like God, but Zordon, he's a pretty good Christ-like figure. <laughs> exactly. I'll yeah. keep making these outfits, but if you start walking around in black slacks and a white t-shirt with a black tie, no, 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 no. I would have been disowned. If you started doing Mormonism? Yeah. Door-to-door Mormonism? If I had (laughs) done door-to-door Mormonism, I would not have parents anymore. (laughs) Hell yeah. God. Nicole, that's an idea. To finally get your dad off your back. (laughs) Try saying, hey, I'm a door-to-door Mormon now. Uh Uh-huh, because we have the same parents? Maybe. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) All dads are the same. They they like throwing their children in the air. Uh-huh. They hate uh-huh. door-to-door Mormonism. Uh-huh. Okay, 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 okay. I was going to ask you, Nicole, did your father ever throw you in the air? I No, because I was a terrified child. Okay. I was scared of everything. Even in a pool? Yeah, dude. An Olympic-sized pool, though. <laughs> Maybe if he had thrown you in the air more when you were like a toddler, you wouldn't be so scared. I'm uh-huh. sure that's his thought to this day. <laughs> he once forced me on a log flume ride. I saw a picture. And I, I cried real hard afterwards. And it's like, <laughs> what did you fucking expect? And I think it was just that, like, he didn't want to not go on it. Because <laughs> oh, yeah. that's like... If you're a single parent at an amusement park mm-hmm. and one of your children doesn't want to go, that's like basically your option. And yeah. you chose the selfish one. There needs to be an employee that, you know, the employee that checks the height of all children. There needs yeah. to be a second employee who just like it's a wall that <laughs> this is going to sound really fun. <laughs> I, I'm intending it to sound fucked up. You know, like <laughs> walls that have like shackles and stuff. Okay. Instead of shackles, <laughs> instead of shackles, they are child leashes that the, yeah. the kids just get strapped to. And then, like, you are given a card. So, uh-huh. like, the card correlates yeah. to the strap. Yeah. So only the parent can obtain like the child. A bag check. <laughs> yes. It's a kid check. Uh-huh. Well, they actually, at, like, Disney, they had the child swap area. That my parents would use. So it's like one parent waits with the kids who are too small to mm-hmm. ride. And then when the other parent gets off the ride, they can immediately swap out so the other parent can go on. Yeah. They need that just for single parents. Right. 
So leashes would have to be involved. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> or just get another adult to go with you. That too. No, no. I don't know if that would work. That seems too risky. <laughs> I have a friend, the two friends from high school, high school sweethearts, and then they got married, had a child a few years ago. Now the child, they they said, oh, here are pictures from our first Michigan's Adventure season pass day this year. And one of the pictures is from that log flume ride. I'm assuming it's the one I'm thinking of from Michigan's Adventure. The only one? Yes. (laughs) Oh, well, I mean, it could have been, uh, it's a small world after all. That's not a lot. Oh, no. Um, ride, uh, what's the Disney World one? There isn't one? Splash Mountain. Yeah, Splash Mountain. Okay. Yeah, the, the big one. Sure. From the racist movie. Uh-huh. There's also a Dudley Do-Right log flume at Islands of Adventure. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. I've been on it. <laughs> Love that area. So, they posted pictures and one of them was them on this log flume ride The daughter in front, maybe like four or five years old. Yeah. And then my friend behind them and the child just go like hands on the chair, like spread going. "Ah!" It was very cute (laughs) and funny. Yeah, why would you sit in the front, dude? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my goodness. It's a log flume after all. (laughs) You want to get into this episode? Oh, yeah. That's why we're here. I forgot. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Today we watched, I believe, episode 27 entitled Don't Sleep or Die. And here's a quick breakdown. It is Nightmare on Elm Street, but with a bug instead of a creepy predator who's all burnt to a crisp from Childs enacting revenge. And then he's like, I'm going to get my revenge on you guys. For what revenge? The legal system allowed you to walk free. So I think they can Dexter your ass. And they don't have dark passengers, (laughs) but they do now because you're, I guess, their dark passenger. And there's also an environmental thing. Five man. Five man. Five man. So let's get into it. It starts out with the zone. And if you have any questions about anything on this show, just let us know, Shelby. Who is that bad bitch? Is that the Empress in her awesome gold outfit? No, that is Garo. Uh, No, no, no. Garo? No, that's Dora. Doldara. There we go. (laughs) She's cool. She's awesome. I couldn't pick up anyone's names, but she was great. I want to be her. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) She was awesome. She was like ordering people around. She had the style for miles, just like big old thing on her head. I loved it. And not she's not only commanding the room, she can command in a computer command prompts because she's also a scientist. Ah, perfect. That's her title. Yeah. Is she? Yeah, that's her title. It's a galactic scientist or zone emperor scientist. It's in her title. Okay. So they're hanging out. She says, in this box, I have the universe's number one assassin. She opens it up and it's a guy named Kama Killer again. And he's a prey mantis that grows big. Yeah. They really, they waste no time. In this show. Uh There's no filler. It's Uh all important. Just quick cuts from everything. Very satisfying to the brain. Yeah. They tell you this is the number one assassin. And then they're like, wait, he's kind of weak. And then they're like, just just you wait. He's going to do it. He's going to he's got a trick up his sleeve. (laughs) Which And then he (laughs) he's like a little toy bug, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) which is not he thinks he's inconspicuous and is covert this is like when a huge dog tries to hide behind a tiny thing (laughs) this man is not a normal size bug yeah if you saw this bug you would think the apocalypse is coming it's it's like five times the size of a regular praying mantis Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's gold and yes it's gold and looks like it's made out of action figure material. Okay, well, we can <laughs> we can suspend our disbelief right there, Shelby. If this were a real bug, it also has red eyes. Okay, mm. but I remember one time after I had first moved to Florida when I was like nine, there was a big, big spider on the ground outside yeah. a store. It was like gray and orange and furry. It was huge. And I was like, there's no way that's real. It just didn't look real. It was way too big and scary looking. So I like put my foot over it to be like, that's not real. And then it crawled away and I screamed a lot. Oh my God. Exactly. 
<laughs> so yeah, maybe people would be like, oh, that's a cool fake bug. Like when I went to the National History Museum of Science and whatever. <laughs> yeah. They had a prehistoric exhibit, animals of the prehistoric. And they, they were like, there were like roly poly bugs that were like this big. And I was like, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> so then whenever I would see a roly poly, I'd be like, get out of here. I don't want to squish you because what if you grow big again? <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. They're, they're my favorite. They're so cute. Roly polies? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Out of all the bugs, they are the cutest. But if you saw one that was larger than a bowling ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it'd be too big. All of its little legs creeping on you. Disgusting. <gasps> I mean, <laughs> butterflies freak me out if you if I look at them too close. Uh huh. Which I we'll, like them. We'll be getting into more because <laughs> oh, we should have said this up front: July first and July second, over on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube, we're doing the first, hopefully, annual Kai July convention where we're inviting guests on and they choose the movie, the kaiju movie that we'll be discussing and. I believe today's guest will be on discussing Mothra versus Godzilla. Yeah. I'm going to talk about a moth. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, they're oh, disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> they're creepazoids. I don't like them. Yeah, Shelby, did you ever watch Freakazoid? Yeah, I watched Freakazoid. Hell yeah. Of course yeah. I watched Freakazoid. Runs around in underwear. Yeah. Freakazoid. Freakazoid. <laughs> I started re-watching it a little bit a couple nights ago, and it's perfect. Yeah, I imagine that's one of the shows that holds up. It was so clever. Mm -hmm. Like, my dad liked watching it, too, yeah. you know? It was great. I found out the same people who were behind Batman the Animated Series, they went on to do Freakazoid. What a beautiful story. Yeah. What a connection. Man, hell They got dope. to do all the silly, weird shit that they wanted to do with Batman mm -hmm. with Freakazoid. Yeah. Freakazoid. <laughs> This man, this prey mantis, comes out of the box and he says, your guys' heads are too high. He explains that, but I still don't understand it. Their egos are too big. Okay, But he was explaining it as if because they don't know who he is, yeah. their heads are too high. Yeah. Or maybe it's like, oh, because you don't know who I am, you don't think I am the number one assassin? Yeah. Which, thinking <laughs> of this, he says, you think you're better than me? Uh-huh. Uh, mm -hmm. Freddy Krueger should have teamed up with someone to become the number one assassin. Okay, so in this scenario, is someone deploying Freddy Krueger? Like, yeah, kind of. Okay. He has a manager. Yeah, he needs a manager <laughs> <laughs> to strategically deploy him. Instead yeah. of wasting your time with, like, teens... Come mm -hmm. on, aim for world leaders, Freddy. Yep. You have so much more in you. Because then the entire world knows about him and he can go to anyone and have his pick of the litter. Meow, meow. No one's safe. Maybe yeah. it's because he's an introvert. Oh, okay, that could be it. <laughs> he's shy. <laughs> he is. He spent all that time in that dirty basement yeah. boiler room. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not boiler room. Because that's his home. He's a homebody. He died by fire, Jason by water, you know? God damn it. <laughs> it's so stupid. So Freddy Krueger is a darling homebody. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just, yeah, he could be doing so much more as a dream demon instead of focusing and setting his sights on one small town. Even in that movie where the town, everyone leaves and there's no teens allowed, which is uh, how this household is. <laughs> Just, he still was like in this town of Elm. Is that the only place he could go? I know it's Springwood, you fucking assholes. Don't message okay, me. Okay, damn. <laughs> well, maybe because they named the movie Nightmare on Elm Street, he was limited to, but there's an Elm Street in like every uh -huh. town. Yeah, which is, I think... I think Will Smith says that in one of his songs, or it was Comatose's version of Nightmare on My Street. Mm -hmm. It's a yeah, rap song. I wouldn't song. know. <laughs> You're the expert there, James. All right. Hey, guys, let me know. In a five-star <laughs> iTunes review. 
as if all three of us have heard Comatose's version <laughs> of that song. As if all three of us have heard the original version by Will Smith. I've heard the original. <laughs> okay. Get out of here. It's a nightmare on my street. It's on like every Halloween playlist oh, okay. ever made. I, I still say... A thing that needs to be on is Houdini's, like, monster house party. That needs to be on every... It's so bad that it's good on a Halloween. Which means it's bad. No, it's good, guys. <laughs> Houdini's awesome. Put it in there right between the track that's just, like, creaking doors. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And, and one that's, like, wind whistling yeah. through an alley. And Thriller, even though the song's not scary, it's just the music video. <laughs> And the dog barking version of Spooky Scary Skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> I get a five hour cut of that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't understand why people do that on YouTube now. Because it's funny. Uh, there's no Dude. reason to have a 10 hour video. That's just clogging up server space. It's funny, dude. It's for the lols. You ever heard of it, bitch? Yeah, I have. <laughs> I wish you'd do it sometimes. <laughs> Nicole's so serious. I'm like, uh, where's the Joker when you need them? That's one thing I've picked up about Nicole from being on this podcast. Mm -hmm. Is that uh -huh. only serious things yeah, yeah, coming yeah, out of yeah, Nicole's yeah. mouth. Yeah, like that time she was just morbidly talked about leashing children like they're in a dungeon. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my God. Butter's doing a stretch. Ah! Yeah, it's very oh cute. Oh, my God. <laughs> Guys, people have been talking about air pollution in media for decades okay. now. Yeah. And still, nothing's being done. Yeah, because money. I'm going to be honest. Eco-terrorism should be a thing. Yeah. Like, people... We look at the, in Godzilla, the people who are like, I need to use this machine to control Godzilla and all the kaiju to destroy the world unless we do things about our environment. Th those mm -hmm. people aren't the bad guys. Yeah. I think there's also a, a Pokemon yeah. where, where the villains are technically doing that. And it's like, no, th they're yeah, good. That's Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, right? Like they're. Damn. Damn. <laughs> I mean, there's like real yeah. terrorism happening and they're not doing anything about it. Hey, yeah, that's like regular. That's a good point. <laughs> so, yeah, regular terrorism. Wait, yeah. first we need to solve the problem of fake terrorism. <laughs> <laughs> but if if someone were to try to be an eco terrorist, yeah, yeah, yeah. meaning they're being they're being terrorists for the ecosystem, not using the ecosystem against us. I think you know what we mean, listeners. They yeah. would be like, oh, well, uh, big oil is paying for our our campaign funds. We have to squash them. But, oh, the clan are us, so we can't take them out. So that's why they're not doing anything about current day terrorists. But eco-terrorists, they would. So what, what you're I'm saying confused. is that we should create... A not existing problem. <laughs> yeah. To solve, to prove a point because we can't solve the problems that we really have. Yeah, I'm just saying if someone wants to be an eco terrorist, as long as you're not killing innocent people, like go after those who mm -hmm. are, like blow up a building that is. Exxon Mobil, like their headquarters. Oh, it's pretty sick because that's in the like Harley Quinn eat, bang, kill tour. That's sort of like a tangent they go on is Poison Ivy's like murdering all these corporate fucks yeah. that are fucking up the environment. They use that storyline, I, I think, in Gotham, I believe. Probably, yeah. Yeah, like Poison Ivy, Bruce Wayne... Take a step back. You don't need to go after Ivy, okay? <laughs> yeah. Poison Ivy has a point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. All these other people are like, I have a freaky Alice in Wonderland in my head. I'm going to murder children. Yeah, go after them. I'm the Joker. I'll murder anyone who looks at me. Go after him. Or, I'm a bucket of clay. I don't know. Leave him <laughs> be, I guess. <laughs> He's got a hard life, guys. <laughs> What about Man Bat? The one that's like <laughs> Man Bat, like the reverse Batman. Oh, he so funny. science made him, so again, let him be. Yeah, let him roam free. Also, 
don't be afraid of Man Bat. He takes care of the bugs you don't like. <laughs> True. He flies through Man the Bat night. is an important part of the ecosystem, uh-huh. and that's what we're trying to save. And the goddamn pollution is wiping out Man Bat as we know them. Right. Especially in the cities. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because there's no bugs for them to eat. Oh, no man. bugs for them to eat. And look at that segue right back into the episode. <laughs> so they're hanging wow. out with this child because he's like, my dad won't catch bugs with me. He's out catching checks to feed my whiny mouth. <laughs> and it's like, kid, just be happy you have someone to catch bugs with. I mean, he didn't. Yeah. He didn't, though. He was by himself. He was with his teacher. He is complaining, like, you haven't caught a single bug all day, and Gaku has to say, "Uh, just, I'll catch the next one, okay? Yeah. And they shoehorn in this environmental bullshit. Get out of here with that. James, we spent 15 (laughs) minutes shoehorning it into a Sentai podcast. (laughs) It is funny. Okay, so from what I understand... There's one child. <laughs> yeah. And they're all just hanging out with this one kid. All yeah. like five teachers are hanging out with this one kid. First of all, they're all adults and they sleep they they live together. Yeah, they're they're siblings. Right. But they're adults. <laughs> they're yeah. adults. But this is all they know. They're also adults who work together in many ways. Yeah. They fight the world's evils. Yeah. And yeah. they're teachers. They can yeah. carpool easy. But also, like, this is technically a kid's show. So, like, two kids, that's they they wouldn't even think about it. Yeah. They'd just be like, yeah. True. The older people I know live together, i.e. my mommy, daddy. Yeah, but they're not siblings. <laughs> yeah, they. but kids don't think about that. James, I'm saying that they live with their siblings. Oh, yeah, that as too. As well, okay. you fucking weirdo. Well, <laughs> we finish each other's sentences. Oh, my God. And each other's plates, am I right? No. What? <laughs> oh, yeah, because you eat sugar and I don't. Yeah. Nicole's just housing bags of She's sugar. Just plates full of sugar. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And it's a, it's crazy how... Uh, I'm losing all this weight, and we somehow are around, like, we're the same weight. Yeah. Well, she's just housing sugar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Still making potassium. For doing the, the one pan, one man punch workout. Uh-huh. I meant to say penicillin, not potassium. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to say uh, dysentery. Uh-huh. uh-huh. <laughs> I haven't looked at my notes at all. Okay, the praying mantis, I wrote DBZ praying mantis. Because it looks like he has, like, Dragon Ball Z hair. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I can see that, yeah. Yeah. My notes just say, taste my foot, and I'm not (laughs) sure. (laughs) The dream sequence, the first dream sequence. Yeah. Yeah. So we see this little bug guy crawl into Gaku's bed while he's sleeping, right? And infiltrate Uh his dreams. Vavavu. Yeah, he gets this little bug nightmare where it's just like, oh, Gaku, but it's his grave. He's dead. And then his dead self is trying to pull him down. And then poof, the what's his name? Kami, Kami killer, killer again. <laughs> yeah. Is there and he's big now. Uh, and he's like, taste my foot and starts fighting him. And Gaku's five man powers don't work in the dream. So he can't like, and he gets child leashed to a cross. Yeah, he gets baby. child leashed to a cross. Yeah, he says he gets crucified, and the guy screams, "Go to hell!" Like Jesus of Nazarene. <laughs> None of that <laughs> happened. He does go. He does get crucified, and the guy screams, no, "Go he to doesn't. hell!" Yeah, he gets tied to the cross. That's yeah. being crucified. I, I'm pretty sure that's not the full deal. Yeah, it is. Of getting crucified. It's being <laughs> put on a cross. Uh-huh. Yeah. But but then luckily all of his siblings are there and they see him sweating and screaming and they're like, wake up. Wake up, brother. That's like me, Nicole. I'd be screaming in my sleep and then you'd be like, wake up, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you have sleep screams? I used to. My brother used to also. He would, like, sit up straight and just scream at the top of his lungs. Oy! It was terrifying. Mine wasn't that bad. I, it would be like, mm, mm, mm. Yeah, it's a lot scarier. It's like he's trying to yell, but he can't. Yeah. Yeah. 
If they were always ghost dreams, Actually, I know I what they know meant. If it's scarier, I feel like him yelling fully would be scarier. Actually, yeah. <laughs> it was frightening. I'm glad I found out why the, or I guess I, not why I was having those dreams, but once I came to that realization of mm-hmm, that thing, mm-hmm, I keep bleeping mm-hmm. out in shows. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I'm glad you did deal with it. Yeah. yeah. Didn't need to go to therapy, you fuckers. Yeah, you do. <laughs> all, all, all I said was on a podcast to Nicole and our friend Nick Foster. Hey, uh-huh. I think blank. And you guys were like, I- excuse me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you saying this for the first time on a show? Uh-huh. I was like, I'll bleep it out. Because this is your therapy. Uh-huh, uh-huh. This is your therapy. Just like music, guys. <laughs> oh, okay. The words I speak, you know, words like... <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> of, I wish I could remember any of my lyrics. Wow, wow, wow. Yes. So good. So funny. Uh, <laughs> fuck. You just wrote a song. I know. A single one. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the anything from Indica Inch. That song is so good. Thank you. Have I said that on a podcast already? Not I yet. love that song. Thank you. Thank you. With Flora High Dill Soren Cinema Switch. Lorelai Gilmore gets the indica inch. Hell yeah. That's my therapy, baby. <laughs> I feel like I went to therapy with that one. Uh-huh. <laughs> or maybe something like heem to the nom to the nimmy nom nom. Heem nom nom. <laughs> heem nom nom. Himmy, 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 himmy. Nom. nom? <laughs> that was a song that I wrote 13 years ago. <laughs> wow. The eloquence. Of a much older man. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> that song sucks, guys. Everyone in, that I know in Muskegon's like, "Yo, man, you gonna perform that Heem Nam song?" And I'm like, "No, <laughs> it sucks. I have such better stuff now. There weren't any multis in there. Oh, so many multis. Not in Heem Nam. Shut yeah, up. Of the same word. Oh yeah, Heem Nam. <laughs> yeah. It's I didn't like writing hooks, so I just like did a bullshit hook. And then people yeah. liked it, and I was like, oh, my God. Sometimes that's the best shit, though. Yeah, like yeah. gene material. <laughs> okay. That was just me walking around saying, I want that ass in gene material. Yeah. Trying to do a Howard Kramer impression. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. It did. We got another song coming out called Exploding Load. That's going to be a good one. I'm excited about that one. Mm-hmm. I've heard great things. It's about semen. When you come, it explodes. That's the great thing that I've heard. Uh-huh, <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. I already know the cover, especially now that I'm like getting like my stomach looking good. I'm going to be in like a Speedo and then yeah. I'm going to get a fake stick of dynamite and just jam it in there. So like it's sticking out. That's the cover. <laughs> just kind of uh, hunks in his punk style. Yeah. For gay singles. Yeah. That album cover. Yeah. And it's just going to be that. But me with fake dynamite in my near my dick. Yeah. Exploding load. So Gaku doesn't <laughs> tell anyone <laughs> that yeah. when he got hurt in his dream, he was hurt in real life. <laughs> because he just thought it was a weird coincidence. Yeah, maybe he was like scratching himself real hard. Yeah, yeah I guess so. It's just to me, I mean, I guess they don't know they're in a TV show, but mm-hmm. they should. Like yeah. they're five adult siblings who live together and transform. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the transform thing I'll go on, but the five adult siblings living together, it happens. <laughs> I think my brothers and I would have murdered each other by now. <laughs> I almost lived with my sister. Yeah. I was considering it back in the day. Yeah. But I was like, well, I need a place to record and her dog always barks. Yeah. So I, I'm not even going to ask her that. But it would have been cool hanging out with Regina all the time. Uh-huh. Shouts out, Regina. Yeah, that's my niece. Hanging out with Max. Say, hey, Regina, ride Max around. I'll get you a saddle. And their cat that sneezes on everything? That This is way before Sneeze? that cat. Oh, okay. This is before Lincoln. Because I never, I didn't know how long she had that cat for. Oh, yeah, it was very short. Yeah. And the cat was very short because it's a cat. Yeah. Cats aren't that tall. <laughs> Let's bang out some notes. I liked when he's in the dream and the dead version of him comes up and he's like, what's going on here? And the dead version says, you died. You're dead. <laughs> Next time Nicole just gets real drunk, which will probably be in like a month or two when your family comes. I'm just going to say that to you. You'll be like, where am I? I'm going to say, 
You died. You're dead. <laughs> I never say where am I. Yeah, you do. Okay. I'll t- uh, okay. Then I'll while we're walking home, I'll spin you around and I I'll say Nicole, you lead the way. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> then you'll say where am I? You could just do that on a normal day. Uh huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> if Nicole, I would love to see you. Cannot do what I do in the morning, which is go yeah. through alleyways to try and find junk to resell. No, the thing is that, like, I could if I had to. Okay, but even I <laughs> but get like, turned around. But, like, if I'm with you, I'm like, oh, I don't have to pay attention because you know where we're going. Okay. Yeah, you let someone else carry that in their brain. Yeah, I don't have to deal with that stress. Mm-hmm. But in this show, they go to a park and Remy falls asleep and she's at this amusement park in one of those teacup rides. Yeah. And she sees parfaits and she's like, oh, I'm going to eat this one from this teacup. Oh, I'm going to go over to this one. And then all of a sudden, a clown pops out. And Hate it. A, a, a clown yeah. with, a, you know, a, a mustache like Merle Allen, a.k.a. like Hitler. So a clown, scary. Hitler, yeah. scary. A clown Hitler cured my low T. <laughs> I'm juiced I up honestly, now. Honestly, I thought this dream wow. sequence was scarier than the first one. Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm like, death? Yeah, fine. Inevitable. Gonna happen. Clown Hitler on teacups? That's sinister. Yeah. Yeah, because you also like can't get off because it's spinning around. It's dude. spinning around. She's cool with it, though. Nicole, I can get off to this. <laughs> oh, my gosh. As I said, it's cured my low teeth. Uh, also, this is a real nightmare dream of like, hey, this is a pleasant thing that I'm looking at. Oh, my God. It just took a turn for the worst. Yeah. You know what? Because the clown, poof, turns into the assassin. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I hope you enjoyed the entertainment. <laughs> wow. It's like, why did you? I don't know. But it reminds me of a nightmare I had when I was a kid where I was like at my grandma's house talking to my aunt. And then my aunt turned into a clown. <gasps> and then I tried to Boy. scream, but I couldn't. No. I had a dream that a baby was crawling on the ceiling and it didn't have an arm because it got cut off in a fan, which I learned previously in the dream that this was a haunted hotel. And I had to sleep with covers above my head for possibly an entire year. Oh. That sounds horrifying. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. I can still see that baby. Oh, and when it was crawling on the ceiling crying, it turned its head around and I was like, ah! no. <sighs> now I'm just thinking of the baby from train spotting. Never seen it. There's a whole scene. Were you withdrawing from heroin at the time? No. Wow. Came up with that all on your own then? Train spotting. Um, my panties are spotting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love how James will just confidently say <laughs> the most nonsensical thing. And that is like, yes, a successful joke. <laughs> I did it, guys. And it was successful. It made you guys laugh. Yeah, it did what you set out to do, I guess. I'm laughing at Shelby laughing. No, no. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have just like rolled my eyes and been like, shut up. I'm spotting, though, Nicole. <laughs> this is shit I hear all fucking day. <laughs> is it because I'm pregnant or is it because my period's early? Uh huh. <laughs> Explain. You tell me, dude. You're the woman of the house. You tell me, dude. All right, fine. I guess I'm pregnant. Okay. Yeah. Everyone's cycle's different. Throw me a fucking baby shower. I'm going to have on my registry just audio equipment. (laughs) (laughs) So I can record the baby's beautiful snoring. Uh Uh-huh. That's what babies are known for. Uh Uh-huh. That's what my baby would be known for. Because I wouldn't be drink giving them coffee to drink like in this show. And like back in the 40s, a man said, hey, feed your child coffee and bacon. Yeah. Wait, what? Uh, we th- Betsy and Mono of We Love Trash were reading advice columns from like the mm. late 1800s and early 1900s. And one of them was like, here's how to raise your children. And one of them was, oh, to get baby regulated to acclimated to the to your diet yes to your diet and your routine feed them after six months old because before that they shouldn't be eating and drinking 
coffee with bacon and eggs. That's what they... <laughs> insane. Feed your infant I just <laughs> imagine a little baby with like a briefcase yeah. and a comb over like, oh, I got to get my coffee and bacon before I go to my boss baby job. I was about to say... Just, yeah, Alec Baldwin. I don't even think boss baby eats and drinks that stuff. Mm -hmm. He's still mm -hmm. on a baby diet. Yeah. I'm on a baby diet. I only eat veal. Oh, no. <laughs> Coffee doesn't make me stay awake. It just makes me crash. But I should do. I should try a 24-hour day. Why? Stay Why up all night. Why would you say that? It'd be cool. Uh-huh. Like, during summertime, that's what it's all about. I know I couldn't do it. I need a regular sleep schedule or I get sad. Well, just one day. I'm not saying, like, uh, every other day it's 24 hours. Yeah, but then you got to – it would take like two weeks to recover from that. Nah. <laughs> you just get high, go to sleep, and then you're good. Oh, my gosh. So she's fighting uh -huh, with uh -huh. Remy is fighting this guy and getting thrown up onto a roller coaster. She falls off of a roller coaster and immediately gets up and runs away. And I was like, nice. Nice mm -hmm. recovery. Like in Three Ninjas High Noon at Mega Mountain, they do that. Like in the uh, – Episode of This Existed, yeah. where you talk about <laughs> three ninjas hiding at Mega Mountain. Uh -huh. With Sean Marciniak and Lil Corey. Yeah, that's my experience with that movie. So, again, all of her siblings come and wake her up. It's so nice. Oh, yeah. Maybe that's the benefit of having your siblings around you all the time, is that they can wake you up when you're having a scary dream. Yeah, they're like roommates, but they actually care about you. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Butter doesn't give a shit about me. No, she doesn't. She left. She left. Nicole doesn't give a shit about me. She oh, gives okay. a gold about me. <laughs> what? That's better Can than you shit. That one? Yeah. I wouldn't want to give a shit about anyone. That's that's <laughs> gross. That's duty. But you would give gold. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or roses. Oh, your, your mind is fascinating, James. <laughs> well, they're they're saying that like they wouldn't even give a shit. Like, that's how oh, much you, they don't give. Well, I would give a shit. Is weird to say, though. Yeah. So I would give a gold. Yeah. A yeah. medal. Okay, like, okay. I'm the Olympic board. Would, it, would you give a fuck, though? Oh, to one person I would. <laughs> no one else. <laughs> I'd throw a couple fucks their way. Yeah. <laughs> ducats, though. I'd, I'd throw a couple ducats to many people. <laughs> Ducats is change and change is cash, as Big L said on Ebonics. I've never heard anyone say, I don't give a ducket. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't give a ducket to them. I've heard it on a Big L song, probably Ebonics. Oh my God. So maybe you can help me here because I was watching this episode and then I'm like, okay, suddenly uh, it's not just the assassin there, everyone shows up. Yeah. Yeah, they have a, a group, a family dream. Yeah, and like yeah. all the other people from the beginning are there too. Yeah, so they. So are, I guess they didn't really trust their assassin to go get well, the job done. They didn't foresee coffee because all of them are hyped up. So they're like, oh, we need to tire them out to put them all to sleep so our assassin can go in and kill them. Oh, got yay. it, got it. That it all makes sense now. I also was like, oh, he at least tired them out enough maybe we can just fight them that too yeah and nicole said oh i thought they were gonna throw sleep bombs at them and then they it was just smoke yeah. <laughs> it was just regular smoke <laughs> but one of them was yellow and we were like oh my god it's pee and everyone knows that pee pee was our warm night drink because remember a robot raised us uh -huh, uh huh. He he thought it was P, not T, to help you go to sleep. Oh no! <laughs> you ever drink oh, no. pee pee? <laughs> no. Okay, all right. <laughs> no. <laughs> Listeners, you ever drink pee pee? <laughs> Nicole. James, no. You ever drink pee pee? Uh, every fucking day of my life. <laughs> yeah, it's called saving the environment, guys. You can consume your pee-pee three times. You ever see that Tosh.0 episode? About what? Drinking pee-pee? Yeah. The, yeah. the lady and she just, just all facets of her life are piss oriented. Uh-huh. 
It's wild. Wow. Bathes you in know, her Daniel piss. Daniel Tosh is from my home county in Florida. Hell yeah. I was going to bring that up when you were like, oh yeah, I taught in Tampa. I was like, you, you know Daniel Tosh? He was from Titusville in Brevard County. Hell yeah. Where, Why do you this is where that? I was from. Because <laughs> that's where Shelby's from. Oh. Yeah. That's how she knows that. Hometown Carrot hero. Carrot Top also went to high school at my rival high school in Florida. Whoa. Mm, that's why they're friends. Yeah, okay, that makes sense now. <laughs> Daniel, to- Tosh.0 is a great show. I wish it were still on the air. Um, I found him off-putting, but, That's you know. fair. That's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in the early days. I it, Yeah. I love Tosh.0, the later episodes, because in the beginning it was like, hey, we're going to put these people on to make fun of them. That's what the web redemptions were. But once they were like, well, let's just have, like, interesting people from the internet on tosh starts to especially after like the r word joke stuff i think started to change yeah. and it actually grew instead of just staying this edge lord where you can see him especially when he's talking to like teens he is so like open and on their level that i'm like wow he's a very fucking good interviewer that's what I love about him is he's like, these are interesting people and I'm not here to make fun of them. I'm here to learn about their lives because they, yes, they're nuts, but that's what I like about people. Yeah. That's yeah. sort of sometimes when I'm at work and I'm like, I just want to see what this person is going to say. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> just for like, just because they're just, they're a character. And I'm yeah. like, I just want to hear them say, just how their brain works, because yeah. it's wild. That's me every time I get in a Lyft or Uber. <laughs> trying to learn stuff about the driver. Oh, my gosh. And they're like, I don't want to talk. <laughs> well, that's fine. I let them not talk. But the ones who do want to talk usually want to show me their freestyle mixtape. Oh, or, yeah. <laughs> or tell me their conspiracy theories about the government. <laughs> Oh my God. Hey, next time they want to show you some rap, say, hey, if you need some beats, hit up this dude. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'll give them your, your contact info. Yeah. MLMPod.com forward slash Marshall and Monster. Don't get that mixed up with the government conspiracy people. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if they want to set their conspiracies to a beat, I'm fine with that. <laughs> as long as they're paying. Yeah, as long as you're getting paid, baby. I love in Super Sentai when they do like an other realm dimension battle, just clearly in a studio room. Uh, They have such character to them. Juko B-Fighter did them a lot. It doesn't make sense to me because you always say that like wide open spaces freak you out. Yeah. And that's what those scenes are like. But I can see the wall, Nicole. I know they're okay. in a room. Yeah, sure. it's literally an enclosed space. All right, all right, yeah. all right. But they're trying to make it like it's an endless void. Yeah, but it's not. Especially this one, It like there were clouds and such. Sure. At yeah. least that's what it looked like. It looked like how in the Showa era Godzilla's, how it was blue backgrounds. Yeah. It was a lot of blue colors for the sky. This was like a pink, like a dark pink, and I, I loved it. Okay. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> it's good stuff. Nicole was watching Finding Dory and oh yeah, man. Yeah, I forgot how fucking cute that movie is. Those movies <laughs> scare me. Oh my god. Because it's wide open spaces. It's just the vast ocean. Yo. The open ocean does scare me. Mm-hmm. I don't want to get in that. How uh-huh. excited for Marcel the Shell movie are you? <laughs> I'm it decent. does look it looks very cute. Mm-hmm. Yes. Is Jenny Slate still voicing? Mm. I would hope so. Okay. I, I was crossed. having fun in the comments where it was like anyone who didn't uh, like doesn't know what this is from is just like what the fuck <laughs> like mm. so <laughs> confused and pissed so fun fused <laughs> uh that kid finds the bug and he's like what a creepy bug and just throws it on the ground clearly he starts, like, no he pokes it with it. a this stick this little sociopath just starts messing with this bug <laughs> <laughs> he's like what a weird bug he's like poking it and stabbing yeah. it yeah <laughs> This dude who's like, I love wildlife, is like, I'm, I'm done with you, and yeah. woodies yeah. him. Well, I don't know. I if love he... wildlife, but not this one. <laughs> mm-hmm. If he's like, 
oh, it's dead? I don't know. Oh, maybe. Yeah. But that that pulls the guy out of the dream because yeah. he's like, stop stabbing my body. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's what Shelby should have done with that gross ass spider is get a stick to try to poke it. Ugh. I should have poked it with a stick. But what if it crawls up the stick? It could have crawled on her foot, dude. I didn't, it could have jumped onto my foot yeah. and crawled up my leg. That would have been the worst, just horrible nightmare. You should have poked it with a crossbow. <laughs> Hell yeah. I thought you were just going to say cross. Oh, no, that too. See yeah. if it's a demon. <laughs> so then they're fighting in the real world again. Yeah. It's, thanks to this kid. It's truly Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. This is what yes. th they pulled him out of the dream and got him into the real world. Yeah. I just have one you, more note, though. Okay. Me too. But, you know, I saw Nightmare on Elm Street when I was, like, 11. I was watching it at, like, the lady across the street who I would babysit for sometimes. She, like, showed it to me and my friends. And then we <laughs> slept over at her house. <laughs> and <laughs> she was like, she was like, Shelby... You would make a good mom because every time I the the little baby monitor went off and I went to check on the baby, like you were awake, and I was like, "That's because I didn't sleep." Because you showed me a <laughs> fucking terrifying movie, you crazy woman. <laughs> My mom was super into Nightmare, so I think I saw that young and was just like, "This is a good movie." Yeah. Again, I Too was scary for me, a terrified child, so I just didn't even watch horror movies. You a freak. That's fair. We both had completely opposite reactions to what Nicole said. <laughs> Their robot friend turns into a whole ass cannon. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Not robot friend. Yeah. Robot father. Their robot father. <laughs> Guardian. Turns into a whole, they're just like, he's like, oh, I hope I can help. And then turns into a legitimate cannon that they need all five of them to hold. Mm -hmm. Just so upbeat. To murder people. It's incredible. I wish my dad could do that. <laughs> yeah, all dad should be able to toss you in the air and turn into a cannon. <laughs> exactly. And disown you if you do door-to-door -door Mormon. <laughs> okay, okay. My last note is after they win, the, the where they're back with this kid, and the kid catches a bug and lets it go. And they say, why'd you do that? All this kid says is, well, and then they interrupt him and says, you do not need to explain any further. We know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. He just says, well. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I get it. You don't want to let the kids talk too much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I did say that. I was like, hey, this kid's a bad actor. Don't give him too many lines. <laughs> yeah. I've always thought that, too. As like a writer, I'm like, why am I going to write a kid into something? Uh-huh. <laughs> So then you'll have to find a child actor? No way. Yeah, you got to go with uh, 19 and above. Because then they're legal. <laughs> Casting couch, baby. BRCC, we're coming for you. And coming on you. <laughs> what? <laughs> Backroom casting couch. Okay. Right, 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 right. <laughs> exploited teens. Or no, yeah. um, I, I like um exploited college girls. Yeah. That's who we want to exploit. X Koji, that's what their 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 website is. I'm guessing because they, they lost their domain for some reason. <laughs> and they're like, okay, we gotta switch over to X Koji. Okay. Well good. Good for them on discovering something new. I don't know. <laughs> it's a, it's James, a, you have a lot more knowledge on this topic. It's a good website because they 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 focus more on the woman having orgasms than just like, oh, we're going to nut on you. Okay. I'll mm -hmm. che check it out. Yeah, do it. <laughs> check out Hegre Art's demonstration of an orgasm. That's my favorite All porn. Right. Okay. <laughs> I love to watch my friends' favorite porn. <laughs> it makes me feel so close to them. You, you'll be like stream. You'll be like looking through porn. Okay. Oh, what's this one? And then you'll be like, Oh shoot, this is the one James was talking about. Exit <laughs> out of this, even though it's very good. He ruined it. Our next Patreon podcast. My friend's favorite porn. <laughs> oh, that's that's good. That is good. No. <laughs> 
<laughs> we live in a sex positive society. Oh, we yeah. don't, but we can make it more sex positive uh-huh. with our new podcast. Yeah. <laughs> our friends' favorite porn. Oh my god! Then we watch it separately, and then we come, we talk about we it. Come. Yes, exactly. Come. Yes. Then we come and talk about we it. We come together, but you know what I mean. In we separate, are but separately. Yes, we arrive to the show. <laughs> we discuss it, and then we say, "Hey, did this make you want to have an orgasm?" Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And did you? Did you? Yeah, that's like that's like. Hey, did you like this? Mo- the way you said it. Okay. It's like, oh, also, if we were watching together, it, it's like someone watching your favorite comedy. You're looking at them the entire time, seeing if they're going <laughs> to laugh. Oh, do, do you have a boner? But what's oh. porn is seeing if they're going to come. Yeah. Do, do you have a boner? <laughs> Let me check your pants. Oh, my God. Are, can you sit up? Is there a wet spot? <laughs> How do you know when the right time to come during a porn is? Like, when's the right time to come? <laughs> I don't know. It's just when it Any is. time? Yeah. Yeah, but then it's like, okay, I did it. I'm not going to finish watching it. Like, Well, yeah, then you just turn it off. <laughs> you pick up again later next time. Oh, I, I, I rarely. You're, you're like... <laughs> In your scenario, like you have to sit there and keep watching it. <laughs> even well, if we're you... watching it for the podcast. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, th- I forgot that was the <laughs> conceit of this bit. <laughs> so yeah, I guess you w- you would have to start like a week before the podcast just in case. <laughs> and you wouldn't really take notes unless it was a, uh, this would actually be a good podcast. I think what someone has pitched this one, it's. Watching porn parodies and that reviewing was those. Possibly also me. Yeah, I think it was you. <laughs> the the Brady Even though I watch zero porn. Yeah. <laughs> the not another Brady bunch porn parody is great just because it has Leah Love in it and I'm a big fan of Leah Love. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Two thumbs up to Leah Love. She went on to direct and produce pornography. Cool. Maybe she'll guest on our new podcast. Uh Uh-huh. Your friend's favorite porn. Your friend's favorite (laughs) porn. Speaking of podcasts, on this one we're talking things. Um, (laughs) I wrote, so my last note is like, so what I thought, what I thought was going to happen, because it felt like they set it up for this to happen, for this child to like accidentally like slash on purpose i guess or like unknowingly catch the villain like as yeah. a bug yeah but it didn't happen sort of does so me thinking that's gonna happen and i was like holy shit i want that as an anime where it's like this child just has a pet praying mantis who just is an assassin that'd be good and i'm like i feel like this exists in some form and then i was like i kind of just like, yeah, this show would be great if the five men just had this <laughs> assassin as a friend. Yeah, for the rest of the show, it's just like in a little tank in the background. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just their classroom <laughs> pet. With like a stick and a leaf just <laughs> hanging out back there. <laughs> just so pissed. They feed him crickets or something. <laughs> it's very Sergeant Frogish. Yeah. Because he technically wants to assassinate the entire world. Yeah, but that like... What do you call it? Story structure or whatever is like that they try, but they're really bad at it. So they never do. Oh, so you're saying this Prey Mantis would be assassinating people? No. Okay. I'm just saying he's just there and he's like pissed the whole time. Okay. Yeah, he can't get out. For some reason, they trap him in his bug form. Uh, It's actually that one show that we did it for Should This Exist... The lowbrow show where it's all the different Japanese demons, that kind of would have been in that vein. Kind of? Except she's technically on, like... But, like, he, they're friends, though. Like, he's not, like, fuck you, let me go. Yeah, it's like Kuki Kaigugen, something along those lines. It, you watch the, the pilot. It's on Lowbrows. Just go to Lowbrows' YouTube channel. Click on their pilot playlist. Watch all of them. You'll eventually get to it. <laughs> watch everything <laughs> on the website. Yeah. 
Uh, what? Yeah, the website youtube.com. Watch everything there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll get <laughs> radicalized, You'll baby. You'll get there eventually. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, that's it, guys. <laughs> that's Wait, it. We Shelby. did it. Shelby, did you do all your notes? Yeah. Or, okay, sick. Shelby, the, the five men are teachers who use what subjects they teach in their battle against zone. If you were a five man and also a teacher, because that's what the sibling teachers do, they are siblings okay. and they teach, what subject would you teach and how would you use that to take down zone galactic warriors? Okay. Well, I did teach English and like literature is what like my bachelor's degree is in. So maybe I would just like throw books at them. Okay. Just throw <laughs> or like maybe do some really stupid wordplay that's so bad that they don't want to be around me anymore and they go away. You fight with a novelty <laughs> pin? Yeah. <laughs> or may, it's a, like you have a spear that is a old school like dip it in the inkwell thing and you stab and them. Yeah. Yeah. That's my my little weapon that appears. And I go poke it at them, but I'm really just, I'm like drawing letters and stuff. Yeah, th- yeah. That was going to be my next pitch. Yeah. Maybe. I think that'd be good. You, uh, you get big books and you slam them in there instead of just small That's books throwing. That's a great idea. A big book. And I sl- <laughs> or just, I open to this yeah. like, oh, this is my favorite scene. <laughs> uh, you can really get lost inside it. And then I slam it closed on them. And then when you open it up, it's like a picture of them like. Ugh. They're 2D. Yeah. <laughs> the cats are being fed right now saying cats in butter, butter in socks, whatever it's called. <laughs> if you hear that in the background, guys, that's what it is. Sorry. It's an automatic feeder and Nicole screams to the cat say, get the fucking food. Yeah. It's a recording. <laughs> and for some reason it plays it three times. I think that's good. Because sometimes Sox is sleeping at this time. And <laughs> yeah. So he just wouldn't hear it. I have to like One day nudge I had him. to like shake him away. Yeah. And I was like, are you okay? He was getting, it was in a dream getting assassinated. Deep sleep. You saved him. I saved him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> When he woke up, did you notice that he had a little cut on his arm? No, he has too much fur. One time you woke up and I noticed just um, all his teeth were missing. Oh, <laughs> what? And, yeah, and then he's like, oh, no, oh, no. And he grabs into a, a a cup of water and all of a sudden he has teeth. Dentures. Yeah, he has dentures, guys. <laughs> That's going to be expensive. <laughs> Why? Upkeeping dentures. I, Cat okay. dentures, too. Mm-hmm. That's specialty. Yeah. Anything specialty is more expensive. That's true. Try and get a tit job? Guess what? That's more expensive. Just a general practitioner checkup. <laughs> but a specialty tit job? Oh, my God. Don't even get me started on trying to get... That's where you get them where they're made of, like, snake skin or something. <laughs> That's a better thing that I was, mine was going to be more disturbing. I was going to say, just trying to convince a plastic surgeon to give you utter who, baby. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> I just want six titties flopping around. <laughs> Men, w- women would want to be me. Men would want to be with me. Better wordplay is you just want birds sewn on to you. A teat <laughs> job? Tit. <laughs> There's a bird that's called yeah. a tit. Yeah. Okay. Is There's it called a bird called a tit? Oh, the blue-footed booby as well. We want blue-footed boobies <laughs> yeah. sewn onto you. Which would be funnier because they're big birds. Yeah. Oh my god. I want big bird Siamese twin to okay. me. Conjoined twins. I think the other term's outdated. That's a different specialty thing. Yeah. Oh man, big bird can get it. <laughs> All Sesame Street Muppets, ooh, Oscar the Grouch. What about the, like, Elmo, who's, like, a child? Is Elmo a child? (laughs) I don't know. He's got child vibes. Okay. Well, then skip Elmo. Okay. Snuffleupagus? Oh, man, I want to stick my dingle in its nose. Oh, no. (laughs) You know who my favorite was? The fucking pet worm. (laughs) Which probably, no, I think its name was Wormy. Shove that in my butt. No. Wiggle around. <laughs> I'll sound. I'll sound the worm, Nicole. 
Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Shelby, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. It's always such a good time. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You got anything <laughs> to plug? You know, just check out my podcast, The Rom Complex. Check out other episodes of <laughs> Mostly Speaking <and> Sentai <laughs> and Shuffle in the Deck, because I've yeah. also been on that. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Nicole, you got anything to plug? E- sure. Uh, yeah, like always, follow Darling Homebody on social medias. Go to darlinghomebody.com to look at creepy, cute stuff that I make, uh, like stickers and stuff. And patreon.com slash darlinghomebody for a monthly sticker or magnet. Hey guys, go over to mlmpod.com to find out information about my other podcasts and links to listen. Oh baby. And you can download my music under Marshland Monster over on mlmpod.com or stream it wherever music is available. And again, tonight, if you're listening the day this drops, Gene Material, not Gene Material, that's already out. Check it out. Indica Inch, the second collaboration of Marshland Monster, that's me, and Dragon Boy Suede, aka Howard Kramer. You might might know him from scare tactics, scaring people in a toilet. You might know him from his work on Beavis and Butthead and The Good Family and so much more. Check that out. It's a good song. Ooh, baby, I produced it. He wrote his raps, recorded them. I mixed the bitch. It's good. And go over to patreon.com forward slash MLM pod, where for $5 a month, you get exclusive podcasts. Starting in July, we are doing bonus episodes of Mostly Speaking Sentai over there. It is following a Kiba Ranger. So if you've wanted us to discuss that, hit up patreon.com forward slash MLM pod. $5 a month. But if you're a $10 a month patron, you get exclusive ER podcast streams as well as watch alongs. We're starting straight to Patreon. We've explained what that is before. The next movie we're doing on that is the Banana Splits movie, the horror one that came out in like 2019. I'm excited to watch it. I'm excited to talk about it with our friends. But you also at the $10 feed tier, you get Shout outs on every single free feed podcast. So let's begin with that. Starting with Steve F, Eric Berry of Ranger Command Power Hour, Alex Z, The Waz, Orion, he's a rapper, Defo, D hyphen F O, Kayla, aka Two Grapes, Jordan B, The Chaos Witch, Nicole's brother, Joshua, Steve Barnes, he's Sweet Child of Time co host. That's a show him and I do. It's a good show. Check it out. He's also Introvoid on Spotify and all of that. And then finally, the mother whom I was pushed from. My mom. I've been James. I'm Nicole. I'm Shelby. And we've been Mostly, Mostly Speaking Sentai. Bye bye. Pee. This has been a Marshland Media production produced by James McCullum. For more content, please visit mlmpod.com. To support our network and have access to exclusive podcasts, head over to patreon.com forward slash MLM pod and sign up today. That was fine, right? I mean, I wouldn't say bye. Okay, I'll cut the bye out. (laughs) Yeah. I'll say. I liked it. It it throws them off, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to know what? All right. Got to keep people on their toes. Keep them on their toes for all those hoes who like to eat chodes (laughs) chodes <laughs> a chode is a fun there, thing there's gotta be a food that rhymes with that right like um zo glow oh yeah eat glow that's um glow sticks or the suntan chain that is in muskegon michigan eat crow that's oh, a phrase okay uh, damn it <laughs> or eat I guess we could have said Zo, you know, the Zohan. Yeah, that's a really relevant <sighs> reference uh-huh, uh-huh. that everyone knows and loves. I got to watch that. I need to just get high and watch his whole filmography. That's a good idea. The Zohan's filmography, which is one movie. When's the sequel coming out? Oh, God. Hopefully never. Netflix exclusive. I mean, I I emailed them my spec script, but they haven't. Damn. <laughs> responded. I I assume it's under it's in production now, but you know. 
the residuals you, you will not yeah, I was see. Say, you haven't gotten paid or anything. Yeah, but it's Netflix. Well, I did it. I didn't do it for the money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You did it for the chance to see Zohan back on the screen. Exactly. See, what you need to do is shoehorn a cameo by the Zohan in a, like, David Spade movie on Netflix. David Spade, another (laughs) really relevant, popular... (laughs) He was on one of the most popular ones, uh, The Wrong Missy. The Wrong Missy, you're right, you're right. The Zohan should have been in The Wrong Missy, that's all I'm saying. And I think that's all we have to say for today. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. All right. Let's... It's driving me insane that you sometimes say Zohan and sometimes <laughs> say Zohan. Yeah. Like, it's never one or the other. It's uh, just, it's both. It's the Zohan sometimes and it's the Zohan the other. No. It's <laughs> <laughs> the bullet point maniac, baby. Okay. Let's reset. <sighs> Oh, you okay, little cat? (laughs) All right. Oh, yeah.